hands. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here and to have a talk at this conference. It is a great honor for me. Uh, my talk will be devoted to weekend type problem for solar spaces, uh, but uh, before we go into details, uh, let me uh, recall a classical uh, Whitney problem. Uh, let S be an arbitrary closed subset of Rn. Uh, we consider the following problem, problem A. How can one tell whether a given function f defined on the set S extends to a function f uh, uh, from Cm? And if such an f exists, uh, then how small can we take its uh, Cm norm? Um, I recall that Cm is a space of uh, uh, smooth functions, so more precisely uh, the space uh, of functions uh, uh, which uh, have uh, continuous derivatives up to the corner m. And uh, uh, we uh, shall denote the free space of uh, the space uh, Cm of Rn uh, with the usual quotient space semi norm. Uh, here we take the infimum over all possible extensions capital F. Uh, of the function f. And um, we can see the following problem v, uh, which is closely related uh, to the problem a. Uh, does there exist a linear bounded operator x from uh, the trace space to cm, uh, which is an extension operator in the sense that if we, rest, uh, if we take uh, restrictions of our extension, uh, to the set S, so then we obtain our, our given function F. Uh, this problem uh, has a rich history. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Hassel Whitney solved problem A and problem B uh, only for the case n equal 1 and n greater than 1, or n greater than 1 and m equal 1 in uh, his uh, famous papers. Uh, uh, in 1934. Uh, and uh, after these uh, fundamental papers, um, uh, there were several breakthroughs uh, in this direction by Glazer, uh, Rubin Schwarzman, uh, Byron Niemann, and Pawlowski. Uh, but finally, Charles Petterman uh, gave a complete solution of the above problems uh, in, uh, in the series of um, complicated papers. Uh, in adults of mathematics in 2005-2007. Uh, but um, we are interested in uh, weekly problems for solid spaces. Uh, first of all, I would like to recall that when P is strictly greater than N and M is natural, um, famous uh, solid embedding theorem uh, shows that uh, we have continuous embedding uh, into the following space. Uh, uh, this space is a space of all functions uh, uh, which um, uh, has continuous derivatives up to the order m minus 1 and all derivatives of the uh, order m minus 1 is a further continuous uh, with this exponent. Uh, so in this case we can formulate uh, our written problem uh, in, the same, uh, in the same way uh, as classical Whitney problem because uh, in fact uh, every uh, Sobolev function uh, has a good representative, uh, continuous representative. So we can, um, we can uh, take uh, the trace of a given function f to an arbitrary subset s. But uh, it's true only if p bigger than 1. And uh, in uh, 2014, Schwarzman solved problem A and problem B for solid spaces, but only in the case n equal 2 and m equal 2, and p bigger than 2. And after that, uh, Fetterman and uh, his PhD students and Paul Stokes, uh, they solved problem B on the problem B for solid space in the case n m natural and p bigger than n. Uh, but uh, Okay, but uh, nevertheless, uh, 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 I would like to say that uh, problem A, uh, in fact, uh, 
problem A is more difficult than problem B. And problem A is uh, still unsolved uh, for the case uh, n bigger than 1, n bigger than 1, and p bigger than 1 for some space. Uh, but uh, uh, a special interest for us is the case uh, p uh, less or equal with n and um, p bigger than 1. In this case, we need much more delicate definition of the trace of a, a function f. Why? Because uh, in this case, we can't use Sobolev uh, embedding theorem into the space of continuous function. And the following example uh, illustrates typical situation. Uh, consider uh, the product of uh, smooth uh, cast function with cup of support uh, and uh, uh, double logarithm of 1 over uh, absolute value of x. And then uh, we consider the following series. Uh, here Rk is a, a set of all uh, rational vectors from Rn. It's not difficult to show that uh, in this case function f belongs to W1n, but f is essentially unbounded uh, in the neighborhood of every point. So we can't define uh, in, the, in this situation we can't define the trace as a, a usual restriction. And what should we do? Uh, fortunately, it's well known that uh, if uh, d uh, between zero and n and p bigger than n minus d, n is natural, <coughs> then every function f from the sublet, uh, for every function f from the sublet space. Uh, there exists a small set, a small negligible set E, uh, such that Halsworth measure of this set equals zero, D Halsworth measure. And for every uh, point X from uh, the complement of this set, uh, we can differentiate this integral. Furthermore, every point X from Rn minus E is a Lebesgue point uh, uh, for D alpha F. So in this case we can define the trace, but only for sets with Hausdorff dimension greater or equal d. Uh, and we uh, denote by WPM of S uh, the trace space with the usual uh, 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 quotient space form. Uh, okay. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, at this moment, uh, there are two main papers devoted uh, to weakening type problems for some of the space in the case P between 1 and M, and M is natural. For example, uh, about 100 papers, uh, maybe even more. But unfortunately, all previously known papers deal with sufficiently good sets uh, as, for example, unforced regular sets, uh, single tasks, and so on. Uh, what do I mean by uh, I've forced regular sets? Uh, uh, if we have a set S, subset of Rm, uh, we say that uh, this set uh, D unforced regular uh, if uh, for every point X from the set S and for every ball, a D Hausdorff measure of intersection of B X R with S is comparable with R to the power D. Uh, uh, we, we will call uh, this set as D unforced regular. Uh, but what about problems A, uh, problems A and B for more complicated set and P between 1 and N? Uh, we restrict ourselves uh, by sufficiently rich and sufficiently large uh, class of sets, namely D6 sets. But um, in order to introduce uh, the notion of the D6 set, uh, I need uh, the following uh, notion of D Hausdorff content. Uh, D Hausdorff content, uh, it, it, it's not the same uh, uh, as uh, D Hausdorff measure, it's a different uh, notion. And uh, here we take the infimum or all countable coverings of S by balls with arbitrary centers and arbitrary radius. Uh, so to define the Hausdorff measure, we, uh, 
we should consider HD delta with uh, radius bounded above by delta and after that uh, we take limits uh, when delta tends to zero but in this situation uh, we consider arbitrary centers and arbitrary radius it turns out that uh, this uh, Hausdorff content is, uh, uh, is much more delicate tool for us than Hausdorff measure uh, why? Uh, for example, uh, if we consider uh, If we consider a single cusp uh, and consider uh, this point, uh, then a uh, Hausdorff, uh, D Hausdorff measure of this intersection, when D less than N, uh, it's plus infinity. So D Hausdorff measure is unuseful for us. And N Hausdorff measure is also unuseful for us because. Um, uh, we have a uh, rapidly uh, decreasing uh, measure of intersection for cusp. But it turns out that Hausdorff content uh, is much uh, better for cusp. Uh, and we consider, uh, we say that uh, S is D sick if there exists some epsilon such that for every X and sufficiently small R. Hausdorff content of intersection of every q, q with sufficiently small side lengths with our set E is uh, bounded from below by epsilon r to the power d. Uh, here we see typical examples. Uh, every unforced d regular set is of course d c. But what is uh, uh, more important? The closure of an orbitary domain is one c. Uh, I try to explain why. Uh, uh, for example, consider uh, by domain I mean uh, open fast connected set. Uh, if we consider uh, an arbitrary domain omega, uh, uh, we pick a point x zero and consider a cube. Uh, cube. Uh, if uh, our domain, uh, um, without loss of generality, we may assume that our domain, domain omega does not contain in this cube Q. In this case, we have point x1, uh, which do, uh, does not belong uh, to our cube Q. And our set is pass connected. Then we can join x0 and x1 by a curve. And consider uh, this, uh, the piece of this curve. Um, consider uh, some coordinate system and let uh, project this curve to this axis. If we have a covering by both of this intersection, then uh, projection of these balls cover projection of this curve. Yes, uh, but the length of the part of this curve which uh, lies uh, in our cube Q is uh, greater or equal side length of our cube Q divided by 2. And then uh, if, if we take sum of all, project, uh, of all radius, uh, then uh, because uh, we cover our projection, then sum of rj greater or equal r divided by 2. So uh, every uh, open pass connected set is 1c. And the closure of course is also 1c. Okay, and now I would like to introduce the main tools uh, to formulate our main uh, results. Uh, we need some tools. The first main tool is Frostman measure. Uh, uh, we have the following theorem. This theorem is quite old and uh, was proved may maybe 50 years ago or 60 years ago. Uh, if uh, we take d between 0 and n, and if we have uh, an arbitrary compact k, then there exists a constant c which depends only on dimension and, and measure mu k uh, 
such that we have uh, uh, such uh, that we have uh, the following estimate uh, for the growth of measure and uh, the, uh, the measure of our compact case comparable with Hausdorff content. But for us, uh, um, uh, it will be more convenient to work with probability measure. So we divide our measure by the measure of k. Then we have probability measure. Uh, the second main tool is, is a, a packing. Uh, if we have an arbitrary closed set, a packing is any family of pairwise disjoint closed cubes with equal side length. And uh, we say that pi is a system of packings if for every j, pi j is a packing which consists of cubes with side length 2 to, two to the power minus j. And finally, we need to consider porous cubes. Uh, what is it? Uh, if we have, uh, for example, set S and cube Q, we say that this cube is lambda porous if uh, we have cube uh, Q this hat, uh, which lies uh, in the uh, which lies here in uh, uh, Q minus s and the side length of this q q hat is comparable with side length of q okay and the, the most important tool is the following calderon type maximal functions is a generalizations of a very well known sharp functions uh, uh, here we introduce two maximal functions the first uh, and the second but in fact, the second maximal function is a natural generalization uh, for the first maximal function. Uh, here, uh, in the first maximal function, we take the soup over all uh, cubes q1, q2, uh, containing our point x uh, with centers in S and uh, with uh, sufficiently small uh, side lengths and with comparable side lengths. But I, I would like to draw your attention that uh, we have different measures here and here. Is a Frostman type probability measure. So uh, we we use this theorem, uh, Frostman theorem, to uh, to construct probability measure uh, with uh, this property and this property, and after that we introduce this maximal function. Okay, and uh, uh, now we need a uh, function of S and P uh, and B and P. Uh, why I use these notations S N and B N? Because in fact S N looks like Sobolev norm uh, for the closed set. Here we integrate function F and integrate a uh, Calderon type maximal function over set S. And I would like to note that here we integrate over classical Lebesgue measure. And uh, Bn is a Bessel type norm because here we sum uh, over uh, we sum up over all porous cubes and take the supremum, the supremum over all system of patterns of uh, lambda porous cubes. Uh, okay, and finally, our extension operator. It, it's a natural generalization of classical weak extension operator. Uh, but I need to recall some uh, definitions. Arbitrary closed subset of Rn, then uh, Whitney proved in 1934 that uh, the complement of S, its open set, uh, this set in fact is a union of closed dyadic cubes, Qj, such that uh, uh, interiors of uh, these cubes are pairwise disjoint uh, 
And what is more important that uh, if we can see the Q, QJ, then the distance from QJ to S is comparable with diameter. More precisely, uh, diameter of QJ is less or equal uh, 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 sorry, uh, distance distance from QJ to S uh, greater or equal diameter and less or equal for diameter. It's a uh, uh, this family of cubes. Uh, Whitney, uh, now is called Whitney decomposition of the set R n minus s, uh, and uh, covering multiplicity of uh, this family is bounded above by uh, the constant depending on the on dimension. And after that, we can introduce smooth uh, partition of unity. So we introduce system of functions phi j such that uh, support of phi j uh, is contained uh, in uh, this cube uh, this function smooth and sum of all j equal 1 identically 1 on Rn minus S. And uh, what, sh uh, what should we do further? If we have a point X uh, is the center of Q, uh, for example, Q alpha, uh, then uh, we take metric projection of this point to the set S, X kappa with wave. Uh, we built a cube, Q, uh, with the same side lengths and consider intersection of uh, this cube with our set S. And then we integrate uh, our function, uh, our function by the intersection of this cube. Uh, we call uh, this cube a uh, re reflection of this cube. It's a reflected cube. So we integrate our function uh, over uh, over um, uh, reflected intersection of reflected cube with the set S by Frostman type probability measure, and uh, after that we sum up over all uh, phi kappa. And now our main result reads as follows: Let p between one and infinity. Uh, d bigger than n minus p, and we assume that S is a DC closed subset of Rn. Then F belongs to the trace space if and only if, uh, for some S prime uh, with uh, such that Hausdorff measure of S minus S prime equals zero, we have the following, and uh, this functional is finite. Uh, furthermore, uh, uh, the trace norm is comparable with this functional and extension operator uh, acts linearly and continuously from the trace space to WP1 and every X is a Lebesgue point of the function F. Uh, as a particular case of our theory, we have the following result. If P bigger than N minus 1, then we have an exact description of the trace space on the closure, to the closure of an arbitrary domain omega because omega is one sixth set and um, uh, I would like to mention that um, yeah, in our extension operator uh, in this functional uh, in this functional and in, in these maximal functions in fact uh, we can choose um, uh, Frostman measure not uniquely. Uh, so, uh, so, in fact, we have not a single maximal function. We have a family of maximal functions, and this family depends on the choice of uh, measures of, of 
Grossman type measures. Because the measure which satisfies these conditions uh, may be not unique. But fortunately, our trace criterion does not depend on the choice of this measure. Uh, the constant of equivalence here uh, depends only on dimension, on p, uh, on uh, lambda, uh, the coefficient of porosity of cubes. But uh, uh, constant of equivalence does not depend on the choice of uh, frost type measures. Uh, and as a particular case, uh, let us consider a force and regular set. In this case, uh, because uh, uh, our uh, constant of equivalence does not depend on the choice of Grossman measures. If our set is unforced and regular, we can take a usual Lebesgue measure instead of abstract Grossman measure. In this case, it's not difficult to show that best of type norm can be estimated from above by solid type norm. And so we have the following result. And here, uh, Fs is usual uh, sharp maximal function, and this result coincides with the uh, result obtained by Schwarzman uh, uh, 10 years ago. But in fact, this result uh, was obtained in his PhD, but published uh, recently. Uh, okay, but what about generalization to the case M bigger than 1? Uh, it turns out that problem A and problem B is extremely difficult for some of the spaces M bigger than 1, and uh, this problem is still unsolved. Uh, why? Because um, uh, when m bigger than 1, uh, we have uh, all the information about the function f. And we should recover uh, all derivatives uh, using all the information uh, about function f. It's, it's a very difficult problem. And we consider a more simple problem. Uh, suppose that we have not a, a function but a family of polynomials or a family of jets. Uh, on, uh, on the set S. We uh, refer to PM minus 1 as uh, the Whitney M minus 1 field defined on S. Uh, let S uh, uh, be a closed set with house of uh, dimension greed or equal D, and uh, M is natural, and P bigger than M minus D. We say that uh, M minus 1 field D agree <coughs> with function F from the Sobel space on S. If for sub S prime, uh, we have the following uh, the following equality. So uh, roughly speaking, we have the back point for the coefficient of our field. Uh, so we can pose uh, problem C. Uh, let D uh, between zero and n, and S be a subset of R n with Hausdorff dimension greater or equal D. And let P M minus 1 be a written M minus 1 field on S. For every P, find necessary and sufficient conditions to P M belong to the trace space. But here the trace space is not the same as uh, trace space mentioned before, uh, because uh, here um, we consider the linear space of all written M minus 1 fields, which uh, D agree with function F. Uh, uh, what does it mean? Uh, uh, it, it means that you have a family of polynomials be an arbitrary subset of Rn and let for every point x we have a polynomial of uh, degree less or equal uh, m minus 1 and it will be convenient for us to write this polynomial in the following way So this polynomial looks like Taylor polynomial. And uh, what uh, this problem about? We would like to find function f 
from the Sobolev space W uh, Pm of Rn uh, such that uh, Taylor polynomial of our function f for every point x from s prime this polynomial is built uh, with the help of function f and this Taylor polynomial should coincide with this polynomial pm minus 1x for every x from s prime not from s but from s prime because uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, how to say <laughs> we can delete a small set with uh, d Hausdorff measure equal zero negligible set but for all uh, uh, for all points from the set s prime uh, we should have this equality. Uh, in order to solve this problem, uh, we introduce generalizations of Calderon type maximal functions. Here, instead of integrating function f, we integrate this uh, Whitney field. Uh, we integrate over intersection of cubes uh, with our set s and uh, integrate by a Frostman type probability measure. And uh, this maximal function is a natural generalization of this maximal function uh, because here we take uh, the soup over all Q1, Q2 containing X and here we take uh, soup over all Q1, Q2 containing given Q, Q. But if Q e uh, equals one point then <laughs> we have this maximal function. Uh, okay, and uh, we introduce uh, functional S n. This functional uh, depends on m, not only on p. Uh, this functional is uh, generalization of this functional. This. It's uh, uh, this functional is when m equal one. Uh, and this when m equal 1. Here we use only function f. But here we have m greater than 1 and we use a, a Whitney field, not only one function m. Okay, and uh, 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 natural generalization of our extension operator. If, uh, if we write uh, our polynomial in the following way, we should integrate uh, our Whitney field uh, over intersection of cubes with S by a Frostman type measure. And uh, now our main uh, result uh, can be formulated in the following way. Let P between 1 and infinity. Uh, and uh, d bigger than n minus p and s is a dc close subset of rn then uh, given a uh, Whitney m minus 1 field belong to the trace space if and only if for some s prime uh, uh, we have the following quality and this functional uh, is comparable uh, uh, is, uh, is finite and in this case uh, uh, our trace norm is comparable with this functional. Operator x is a bounded linear extension operator from the trace space to WPM, and uh, every point x from S prime is a Lebesgue point of all derivatives of our extend, uh, extension uh, when alpha less or equal m minus one. Uh, roughly speaking, what is uh, theorem about? If you have uh, a uh, system of polynomials, so if you have for every point x polynomial uh, of degree less or equal m minus 1, and if uh, this uh, functional is finite, and if you have this, then you can extend uh, your uh, Whitney uh, m minus 1 field in such a way that uh, you have a function f from the Sobolev space, and all Taylor, uh, Taylor polynomials 
coincide with a given Whitney field. And conversely, if you know that your function belongs to WPM, then uh, for Taylor polynomials, uh, the following functional is finite and uh, uh, comparable with the trace norm. Uh, okay, uh, I think that's all. Thank you for your attention.